Hello beautiful people and the eccentric hobbyist. In my first scale trick video, Angel Ramos asked me a question about aligning the tailstock on the lathe. Muchas gracias Angel, es una buena pregunta. I bet you all didn't know that I could get by in Spanish, did you? Well I can. I can read all of your comments on a second grade level. Of course, I'm a native speaker of both English and profanity, and you can hear plenty of the latter in my exclusive gag reel videos over on Patreon, link down in the description. Anyway, grab an indicator, hit that subscribe button, y donde esta la biblioteca? Angel asked if it would work to use the scale trick to align the tailstock of the lathe so your part doesn't end up tapered. The answer is... No. No, it won't. Video over, thanks for watching. Just kidding, you're not going to get off that easy. The issue is twofold. A, the scale trick does not give you a number on how far your tailstock is out of alignment, and two, it doesn't take much of an alignment error at all to result in a big taper on your parts, so you want the alignment to be precise. Of course, even if the scale trick isn't good for this, I do have another trick waiting in the wings to save the day. All you need is a piece of scrap that's center drilled in both ends. I'm actually going to use the same bar that I used in the scale trick videos. To do this, we're going to turn our scrap bar between centers. You could do this by taking off your chuck and installing a center in the headstock and then putting on a drive plate or a face plate to drive the lathe dog. But my preferred method is to put a piece of scrap in the chuck and turn a 60 degree point on the end and drive the lathe dog with the chuck jaws. I actually keep this one in my toolbox for just such an occasion. The key thing to remember if you do it this way is that the center in the headstock must be recut whenever it is put into the chuck to ensure concentricity with the lathe axis. The length of this bar doesn't really matter very much at all, although a longer bar will get you better results within reason of course. If it's too long compared to its diameter, you're likely to get chatter. This one is 3 quarters of an inch or roughly 20 millimeters in diameter and 7 inches or about 175 millimeters in length. And that size seems to work quite well. Your tailstock should have two opposing bolts or screws on the front and the back side that are used to adjust the alignment. These work similarly to the opposing jaws on a four jaw chuck. You need to loosen one and tighten the other to move it around. Sometimes, like on my lathe, there's also a locking screw on the back that needs to be loosened before you can adjust it. I'm not a big fan of this system because the tailstock tends to move when this screw is tightened. It can be mitigated though by slightly snugging this screw down before making your adjustments. To check the tailstock alignment, we need to mount our test piece between centers and take a skim cut. Then, we'll need to measure the diameter at the tailstock end and the middle of the bar. The difference between these two measurements will be half of the total taper since we're measuring in the middle of the bar, but that's also the amount that the tailstock will need to be moved to correct the taper. Since we only need to measure at the end and the middle, there's no need to cut much past the center of the bar. Once you know how far the tailstock is out of alignment, you can set an indicator up on a convenient spot and start adjusting the tailstock. Your measurements will tell you which way to go as well. If the tailstock end is smaller than the middle, the tailstock is too close to you and will need to be moved away. Likewise, if it's larger than the middle, it will need to be moved toward you, and that's the case here. My measurement on the tailstock end was 729 thousandths and 8 tenths, and in the middle it was 727 thousandths and 2 tenths, giving me a difference of 2 thousandths and 6 tenths. So that's how much I need to move my tailstock. The two opposing adjustment screws tighten up against a boss on the inside of the tailstock. You'll need to loosen one screw and tighten the other to make the adjustment. Just make sure that both screws are tight after the adjustment's done, and then take another skim cut on the test bar. Repeat the process until everything's aligned to your satisfaction. It can be really finicky to get this perfect, and it won't necessarily stay in alignment when you move the tailstock to a different spot. This is a possibility because of varying amounts of wear on the ways, or because the lathe is slightly out of level and the bed of the machine is twisted. This is why it's so important to level your lathe. 
I'll leave it up to you to decide how much taper is good enough for you. Keep in mind though that any taper in the part will be compounded on longer cuts. So what you find acceptable on a 50 millimeter long cut might not be so on a 150 millimeter long cut. This certainly isn't the only method of aligning a tailstock. There are many companies out there selling precision ground test bars for this very purpose. I do it this way because it's fast, cheap, and accurate. If you have any questions, comments, or if you just think I'm a raging moron for doing it this way, tell me down in the comments section. While you're down there, throw a like and subscribe my way if you think that I've earned it. Or if you really like what I'm doing, please consider supporting the channel over on Patreon like these fine folks. On the left is my most recent video, and over on the right is a playlist of all of my other quick machining tips videos. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.